Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to the final session in our extremely successful MTD Week 2022. Uh, my name is Kevin Lord, I'm the Head of Practice Sales here at Freagent and I'm super excited with the session that we've got to, to close our, our week. It's been a, a really busy week. Hats off to uh, especially Georgia, who's in our events team for, for holding everyone's hand through this, but our communications team, uh, our, our sales guys, our training guys, but but most of all, our, our audience as well. Um, it, it's been pretty lively at times. Uh, the discussions have, have, have been great. Hopefully you've all enjoyed the content and, and our, our feature releases that, that, that we've been uh, rolling out this week as well. So um, yeah, ho hope you enjoy the, the, the final session. We've got a fantastic panel uh, that I'll introduce you to uh, in a second. Uh, just before we get going, uh, I just want to run through some housekeeping, um, if you want to call it that, or or uh, read the riot act, as I, as I said to the panel before coming in. Um, one of the first things that we always get asked in the chat box, and, and it comes out all the time, uh, you know, will we get a recording of the sessions? Yes, what we're going to do is we're going to package up MTD Week uh, and email it out to uh, all the registrants and all the attendees that, that, that came uh, this week. Uh, I think we way over the thousands uh, Mark, I think we are just shy of 3,000, maybe just on 3,000 registrants. And hopefully if this session just pushes over into three figures, we're waiting, we're waiting for seven people to log in. Uh, we'll, we'll have over 1,000 a a attendees for the week, which is, which is fantastic. So you will receive a recording of this uh, via email. If you're a free agent partner, uh, these recordings will also be hosted on our practice portal uh, for you to, to uh, go and read and go and watch. I suppose that gives me a better time than, than ever to, to see, you know, are you a free agent partner? Um, a lot of people on, on this won't be. But So if you're not a free agent partner and you would like to be and you want access to this content and all the other fantastic content that we've got, just give me a little yes there and, and we'll get one of the guys to, to telephone you first and talk about your needs and, and how we can help you further. And then you'll get access to all our MTD content, the landlord content that we released this week. So I'll let that run a little bit while, while I go through the rest of the housekeeping. Now, I've got my fantastic colleague, Sammy, uh, on the flight deck with me uh, as well this morning. Sammy's going to man the, the Q&A session along with myself in the background. So we'll try and keep the, the, the Q&As specific to, to, to our speakers and to what we're talking about. Um, if it's a technical thing, like you, you're struggling to hear or see, then pop that in the chat box for us and, and we'll try and action that as well. Try and keep the chat as positive and respectful as possible, though, guys. We've, we know MTD is a touchy subject. We know it's um, a concerning time for, for a lot of accountants and, uh, and their clients. I know the information out there uh, at the minute is a bit sketchy and, you know, not, not really straightforward. But try and keep it positive and respectful. You've signed up for this webinar to get information, to see how other people are, are, are using the tools that are out there. And, and, you know, we'll try and be positive and respectful back. And then finally, the, there is a, I'm going to end that poll now. So thank you for, for everyone. Um, there is a, a giveaway in a competition. So try and follow as many members as, as you possibly like. Uh, from Free Agent on LinkedIn, re reshare or retweet the, their, their post, comment on their post for your chance to, to win a little goodie prize, which, uh, which is great. Okay, so enough about me. What about my panel? And, you know, sometimes I, I, I used to think for years that, um, you know, I had imposter syndrome. And I, I listened to a brilliant podcast the other day there that say having imposter syndrome means that you're in the right room. Uh, you know, you should always seek out imposter syndrome. Uh, it, it means you're in the right room. And wow, look at the room I'm in today. Look at even just the job titles alone. Uh, it, it's just really intimidating to me. So uh, we've got uh, Jess Capillo uh, with us, who, who's a free agent partner, uh, has been for many years. She works very closely with us and isn't shy to give us our opinions about where we are going right and wrong, which is great. Uh, Jess, Jessica is the founder and, and, and MD of, of Pillow May. Uh, Really happy to have Mike uh, along with us, Mike Dean. I've known Mike for a number of years. Uh, we, we've done a couple of events together. Uh, Mike is the MD of Whisper Claims, which is a R&D um, software company uh, targeted at, at, at accountancy practices. Got Kevin McCallum, formerly of this parish uh, at Free Agent, who is the, the recently appointed chief operating uh, of, oh, spell mistake there, officer of, of Bright. Um, Bright recently uh, purchased a county manager and, and, and Kevin uh, pulls the strings at a, a county manager as well. And then we've got Jackie Mount, who um, 
no offence to anyone else on the call, has probably got the best job title out, out of all of us. Uh, Jackie is the Vice President and Director of uh, Technical Policy at, at our lovely friends at, at the ICB and the, the bookkeeping side. So first of all, guys, thanks very much for your time. I am going to stop sharing um, my screen. And um, our first session on Monday at MTD Week was... Uh, with the poor souls at HMRC who have to come up and front up uh, to, to, to the being mob, shall we say. Um, so it was a very, very lively event uh, on Monday and it was HMRC. Off air, before we came on, Jackie let slip that she's had five MTD meetings with HMRC uh, this week alone. So what better place to start uh, with yourself, Jackie? You had five meetings with, with HMRC. Um, what yeah, was <laughs> it's been a manic week. Um, it's really just to look at the, the developments that like HMRC are going through. By the way, before I start, I'd just like to say that somebody once said to me that the more complex your title, the worse you probably are at doing your job. That's why they give you the title. So hopefully that's not true. But however, um, no, I think this week has been a roundup of all the working parties uh, that I'm involved with. My, my main role is liaising with HMRC on MTD and other things and trying to get the messages across to our members um, obviously, so that they can pass it on to their clients and who will use various pieces of software, free agent um, included, of course. So I think it's a it's a vital job. And there's a there's a lot of negative feedback going around at the moment on various things that have happened and haven't happened are very slow. So we've just been trying to work with them on that this week. And how do you feel that, you know, you're saying working with them? And, and there's no doubt about it. A lot of the chat was it's very, very difficult to work with HMRC at the minute in terms of like poor communication and things like that. Is, is that, and, and Jessica's nodding her head there. So is that what you're feeling? And, and therefore, as, as someone at the ICB, is that yeah. do you need to take responsibility then for, for your members then? Is that, or do your members come to you more than it's, they come to HMRC. It's a two-way street. I mean, at ICB, we've we've been we've been putting out um, webinars since I since MTD started, sort of nearly six years ago. Now we've been through the VAC. We went through all the initial stages. Then MTD for ITSA was put on the on the back burner for a while, and um, that is now beginning to ramp up again. But there has been this hiatus, and of course, COVID didn't help. Um, that sort of put everything on the back burner a bit. But there are lots of developments going on behind the scenes. But from the face of it, for those who, who don't have the contacts that we have as professional bodies, um, yeah, there is a lack of, seems to be a lack of communication. There is a timeline in place, um, which HMRC are working on to make sure that by the deadline, everybody will be informed as to what's happening. Um, as professional bodies, we can pass this on to our members. We can give them as much information as we want to, but what concerns me and a number of the other representative bodies is that there are an awful lot of people out there who are going to fall into the new MTD system who either have a tax agent who is not represented by a professional body, and there's about 30% of the tax agents aren't. But even bigger issue than that are those clients out there who perhaps do the majority of this themselves and have absolutely no idea that this is heading their way yet. Um, and what we're fighting for is to get the information out there to the members of the general public, the, the, the standard sole traders, in plenty of time for them, A, to understand what's happening, B, to start preparing for it, um, and, and C, to make sure that, that they're going to be able to cope with this when it comes. Now, that's where the software company is going to come into this, because you are the people who have um, the client base and can start putting your information out as well from your side uh, as well as as our side um, the biggest issue I think that we're working with at the moment is going to be um, the old paper bag brigade and the people who are using spreadsheets and, and working out how that's going to work but I'm still I'm still crossing everything and hoping that it's all going to work by the deadlines. I think, sorry, just sorry. to come in, I, I think, um, and it's something we need to get to HMRC and I have to try to say to them as well, is that um, until they start communicating with the general public, yeah. they, people almost think that we're lying about the fact yes. that MTD is coming. Yeah. It needs no. HMRC to, to literally make it, it legit. Does. And um, I, I'm not, they haven't issued their dates yet for when they're going to start doing that. It's in a planning process, as I understand at the moment, but it is going to take a while. And I think if 
I think if the if the chat about it is a bit negative at the moment, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen when the stuff does start to come out. Let's just hope that it that they, they get it right. They have to. And and can I just pick up a point then? And Kevin McCann nearly jumped in there, and you, you obviously struck a nerve with our software guys there. You know, you kind of say you know there's a bit of a reliance on the software people to get to get that message out there because we've got access to the client base. Perhaps we've got better better quotation marks tools to to communicate with are we then in danger of stepping on your guys toes and sort of you know your relationships with your clients because you know we've seen in the past they go well hang on they're my clients you you don't yeah. tell them what to do you don't tell you my clients what's coming up that's my job so you know uh, is, is there a bit of you know, i think it's a combination i think we've got to get the balance right because we've got to all work together because if if the, the, the agents and the software companies and the professional bodies don't actually work together as a team on this, that's where it's going to start falling apart. And HMRC have a massive part to play um, in getting their communications uh, system correct. But as long as we work together, it's, let's face it, it is for the good of the client. Whether we are professional bodies representing tax agents, whether you're accountants, uh, bookkeepers representing tax agents, whether you're the software companies, we have got to get it right for the end user. And, and the end user in the end is going to be the taxpayer because they're the people that are going to pay the tax bills at the end, I think. Is there another um, sort of person in the room at the same time on this, which is, if you think about constancy, uh, uh, Jessica said it's going to be the paper bag, or I think it was yourself, maybe the paper bag brigade are in there who are not using software. So the software yeah. companies don't have reach necessarily to get to those people. But they do have, and, and it might be, Kev, that we're going to get to this in the conversation in any case, is that they, they tend to have bank accounts of some capacity. And, and it, it does feel like there's maybe a role for um, banks to, to play in that from a communication point of view as well. Or do you disagree, Jess? I do. I think most old traders don't have business bank accounts. They've only got personal bank accounts. They so how, we, how are you going banks. to filter to who's the personal bank account compared to the business bank account. So it's actually probably going to have to be the personal bank account people that might have to do the communications, which seems a bit... But it's a perpetual <laughs> problem for banks that also I happen to know. There's the, this this kind of people who exactly are in that kind of middle ground. Am I a business? Am I just... This is what I do. This is how I pay for my shopping every every month is, and my rent every month is because I, I have this eBay store or I have this market stall or, or I do other kind of bits and pieces and but there's still banking going on in those kind of bits and pieces to, to find those kind of people and I think there's a I think it's a really kind of key point Jackie makes about how we're going to reach these people in the absence of HMRC uh, making that kind of blanket uh, announcement. And of course there is one other whole tranche that's going to fall into this and that's the property owner mm. um, because there are people who will I, I, <laughs> I agree there are people who will own a property for whatever reason they've inherited or something they may be stuck a tenant in there while they wait to decide what they're going to do. I have no idea that they're going to fall into this scheme. And that's going to be that's going to be a massive issue, I think. They don't even know they're liable for tax, a lot of them. No, I know. <laughs> Might well, anything else. Well, that's so, a whole other grey area, isn't it, whether you're liable for tax or not. Yeah. So session number two on, on Tuesday was about communicating with your clients. And 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 again, we were, we were speaking off air that, you know, uh, Jessica's very much a, a digital practice. You know, you've got a number of tools that, that you use. But so on this, Jessica, what, how, how are you approaching that, that, that communication with your clients? Uh, you know, uh, have you got a strategy in place? Uh, has it already begun? What and what, what, what's the kind of feedback we offer with that? Um, yeah, definitely. You definitely need strategy. Definitely. Um, so we wrote to our clients last April and said, look, MTD is coming. And um, we were actually struggling a bit because we had sole traders using spreadsheets, sole traders using everything. And we were like, oh, for God's sake, this is just so inefficient. So we wrote to them all last April and said, look, MTD is coming. And at that point, it hadn't been delayed, but we suspected it would get delayed. But we were just like, let's just be ahead of the game here. Um, we already had the relationship with um, Free Agent and they already had the brilliant free deal that you get if you've got a metal bank account or an at-risk bank account you get free agent for nothing which is a huge game changer in my opinion on being able to encourage clients across particularly metal bank which doesn't have any bank charges either because the often you get oh i use my personal bank account so then i don't have to pay bank fees so that has blown that one out of the water thank the lord so um so because so we didn't have any cost excuses for why they couldn't do it and that's made a huge difference so we wrote to them last april and said look um we we need you to start using free agent this year um 
and we'll help you. And so we did a lot of, of training with clients one to one because it just works better. And, and, and free agents so easy to use that actually it doesn't take very long. It might take half an hour, an hour, but that's really good client goodwill too. You know, um, so that wasn't a bad thing. So we wrote to them and anyone who wouldn't move, we've literally disengaged from them and said, then we, we've had one out of I don't know, 40 sole traders, and they were a bit of a pain in the neck anyway. So it was definitely no loss. Someone else can deal with them. And but everyone else, you know, they've uh, just come on and it's worked really well and it's really reinforced our client relationship. And and if you speak to like geeks like m- myself when we look at digital change management and, and how to implement sort of tools or, or, or any change management, really, you need to kind of come from it from three ways. You need, you need the people side, you need the process side and, and, and the platform stroke technology side. So that that, that people side in terms of externally what about internally what what about your staff because the, the mtd and, and the way I'm, I'm going to sort of blow a bit of confidentiality here but like I, went, I went to three client meetings this week and the issue the issues were not free agent and or zero or whoever the issues were internally get, getting the manager of that practice getting their staff to to put a certain client on a certain software or use a certain tool or use accounts manager or, or, or use bright pay or that kind of thing so how, how have you coped internally with, with this change? Uh, now, I know you're quite a forward-thinking practice, so I'm, I'm going to guess these people wouldn't be employed by you if, 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 if they didn't. But, but, but what's your advice to, to, to the, the people that are going, God, I've got, I've got an internal challenge here, never mind my clients. Yeah, and I think, you know, it's, it's what I say goes because I'm, you know, at the start and you've got to have strong processes where that is the case. And um, we are doing a, a massive system change internally in terms of perhaps management at the moment. <laughs> and that, you know, is massive from a point of view of getting the team to, to adopt and things. And it's about watching who's not doing what you've asked them to do and giving them a bit of a kick or a bit of a stroke, depending which way you need to do it. And just making, you just got to be really eagle eyed on who isn't following what the practice strategy is effectively and and doing what you can to make sure that they do and and reaching out saying you know why aren't you are you stuck on this do you need help with free agent can I offer you this you know whatever to try and bring them on board really and and can I a final question before sorry Kevin I was going to say I think that that what Jessica just outlined (laughs) is is general practice management not specific product stuff it's about understanding the workflows and and there's not much point in having people outside that really in, within the idea of the practice it's just the efficiencies are not there the scale is not there the understanding is not there the ability to lean in and support and, and kind of catch clients that need your help at the right time are baked into the workflows and um, that's I think a lot of firms are coming to that and you know we're, we're certainly we're here on our side but you know, what Jessica articulates is, is very true about getting the internal buy-in in these people and people you, you can lead them. You can't. You can't. You know. You lead them to that rather than push them at that. I think is is a way of doing it more successful. And, yeah, and, and I can't believe how many practices don't have defined workflows mm-hmm. because yeah, there should be a way. This is how we do it. It's not we're being dictatorial. This is how we do it. Because I was just going to. I was just going to say, Jessica, that uh, it kind of builds on what Kevin just said there. That you know, you put that there's some negative comments coming through the chat there about MTD and HMRC and. You know, we're talking about communication from HMRC being poor, et cetera. And there's a kind of a, there's almost a, a leaning towards giving MTD a bad rap. But if I listen, listen to what you said a few minutes ago there, you know, the, the, the industry is driving to, to improve efficiency and build systems and, and build better firms to be able to service their clients. And that's kind of happening anyway. So if, if if the net effect of MTD is to accelerate that, that's a that's a good thing, right? For the yeah, yeah, I'm really for it. Yeah, yeah, and all my clients, we forced. I, I've said we forced them onto you know to free agent, but they bloody love it. You know, they yeah. come to me and go, and you, oh my you, God, you'd I've be got doing it anyway. You'd be, you'd be wanting to do that anyway, wouldn't yeah, you? But exactly. It's just, just giving us an excuse to, to yeah. force them, yeah. really. But yeah. but they love it now. You know, okay, they probably wouldn't have done it, and we've had to be a bit forceful to get them to do it. But now they're on. They're like, oh my god, I know what my tax liability is. I can already save my tax. It's not yeah. a surprise. You know, yeah. I, I can see what my business is doing. I can see who owes me money, and it's like, yeah, I've been telling you this for ages. Oh. You know, but it wasn't a strong enough kick. Whereas this is a strong enough excuse yeah. and reason why we've got to do it. So it's pretty, yeah, it's great. I think um, we'll we'll also put it perfectly in yesterday's session that yeah yeah it's a strong enough kick, but it's a it's also a lovely. Uh, excuse 
that you've got <laughs> or, or, or a lovely person to blame. Oh, that's not my fault. It's HMRCs yeah. um, uh, as well. So on that, Kevin, um, you know, almost like you guys are reading my notes here in a, a seamless uh, segue there. Yeah. At, you know, I did talk about the three things and one of them was, was processes. And, and obviously you've got experience here at, at, at Free Agent and, and even before that time and, and now in the, in the practice management side of things. Where are people getting it wrong or, or, or have they started or, 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 or you know, what, what, what's, what's the concern? Yeah. Well, I think pe- people are, are, well, people know me. Um, I, I can board me saying this is 2022. Um, it's not a surprise all of a sudden. I mean, the, these systems have been about for a while, like, like Jessica said and alluded. And, you know, I'd give you a mic as well is that people were, were, were doing this. There's this, you know, externality of, of MTD ITSA, which is helping people accelerate maybe some of that stuff and is bringing some of the people at the bottom of the pyramid, smaller businesses, the, the less sophisticated businesses into that kind of mix. Um, I think we're definitely seeing um, that there's a lot of the research is that people are interested in process automation workflow uh, as, as just ways of actually improving on those bits and pieces and some research I saw recently that was that and um, I think payroll were the two kind of most likely changes that practices were or certain set of practices were going to look at over the course of next year. Um, there's some research that's on accounting web. Um, so I think that people are, are looking at this stuff much more actively. I think the efficiency stuff, um, you know, Fragent is 15 years old now, something like that. So, you know, this isn't a new problem that we're trying to solve in terms of clients being using digital tools to improve their processes. But I think there's a culmination of a few threads in this. There's the external to say the MTD side, I think. I think um, one of my favorite topics, Kev, Kev, as you know, is like open banking, but actually open finance, what this is going to get to as well. And the kind of efficiencies and automations and processes you can just like hands off. Things like the you know de- de- uh, receipt capture and, and OCR and those kind of bits and pieces, it, all of the component parts are there. The, lo- the the Lego blocks maybe just haven't been put together by people in the right place. Mm-hmm. I think it's hearing from people like Jessica and the bodies like the ICB that that, that people should be listening to. The people that have done it already, done it before, and you know, like you said, the view from the top. You know, it, the weather's lovely. Thank you very much because you can actually scale. You can be more efficient. You can be less stressed on a day to day basis and actually cope with stuff. And much more proactively so um i don't think it's a problem we're still trying to solve i think it's just some people have still got to kind of work out their own path to get there and that, that's difficult because you're moving from one place to another and you just say kind of change is difficult and digital change is even more difficult but i think there's a lot of tools out there and there's a lot of experiences and a lot of referenceability to how people have done this successfully and, and i think you can only do it gradually like we did our sole traders last year got them digitalized this year we're changing systems so we can process automate far better you know but you can only really do one thing a year i think we're a very cyclical kind of business i think you can only do one a year you've only got that time alongside all your other client work and things so we're doing our landlords next year because i had to say well hang on we've got enough going on this year we're not going to be able to do it effectively you know unfortunately we've still got time to do that but you, you only have if you get moving now on doing one of those because it's going to take you really three years to do them i think and, and Mike, Kevin was mentioned there, you know, this is not a new problem. There's always been tools uh, there. So in your opinion, what, 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 what's, what's the barrier of, of, of adoption and, and adoption well and, and perhaps the adoption with their clients? Yeah, well, we, I mean, we're, we're operating, I suppose, in a slightly different place to, to you guys. So if you think about, you know, the, the, um, the pressure on compliance services that's coming from the result of all the things we're talking about here, you know, you've got, you've got downward pressure on, on pricing that's coming because everybody's more efficient, rolling out more and more services, leading people down this path of thinking about advisory services outside of their core compliance offer. And that's where we sit. So, you know, we're, we're delivering um, or helping our clients to deliver R&D services using technology. And what, what are the barriers to that? So people are, people are concerned about, if you like, a lack of confidence, a lack of, lack of technical knowledge in these, in these advisory areas. Um, so you know, our software is taking people down a path where we're essentially guiding them through complex areas of, of tax legislation, making a process really simple and easy, enabling them to, to launch a new, a new product. Um, that perhaps otherwise they wouldn't be able to. Um, now, why why would they not do that? The reason is confidence, kind of lack of confidence in their own skill, their own technical ability. So one of the challenges that we've been addressing over the last couple of years is, you know, how do you, how do you overcome that? What's the kind of service and support rep that you need to put around your software to give people that confidence to go out 
and talk to their clients and talk about those new uh, those new sets of services. So, so that really the nub of that is education. I think that that leads to confidence and then leads people to be braver in terms of um, developing and launching new services and having more value to their clients at the end of the day. And and I'll, I'll ask a, a question to yourself, Mike, but then I'll maybe ask Jackie and Jessica to to, to follow up because it's kind of touched on. Uh, a special point that Jackie said about about communicating to clients is it is it the the confidence to then take this and and, and to be honest Jessica you kind of touched on this as well like you know this is how I work as an accountant and this is the service I can give you is there a lack of confidence to break the mold and say yeah I have been doing this for you for 20 years but we have to change how we work together. And, and if we change how we work together, this is the result. Is that, is that, is it, is it that those skills that, that, that are, I don't want to say missing, but is it the confidence in having those kind of conversations? I think there's an element, there's an element of that. Um, I mean, in extreme cases, I've heard feedback along the lines of, I don't want to start telling my clients that there's a, the service, a service here that they can access from me that perhaps they should have been accessing for years. You know, sort of a whole can of worms of maybe I've been failing my clients by not offering these services previously. So I've heard that kind of feedback. That's maybe at an extreme end. Um, but I think at the other end of the spectrum, it's literally just down to certainly in our case, you know, we're operating in a niche area of, of tax advisory with R&D. And people see it that way. They see it as complex. They see it as it being outside of their skill set. So they're just worried about if they start a conversation with a client, they maybe get lost pretty quickly. You know, when when clients start talking about, in our area, technical eligibility for R&D, for example. Um, So as I say, that's led us down the path of, you know, how can we support our users in um, having more effective conversations with their clients. And that's led to, you know, there's a technology solution to that, to be, to be fair. You know, if you, if you sat working with our app and you're uh, sat with a client and they come back to you with a technical question, we've got a live chat within the app. You're able to talk to one of our um, team to address that specific question at the time you, you kind of set with the client. So, you know, we're, we're even, we're even sort of leveraging the technology to overcome that confidence issue for our, for our clients. Yeah. And, and suppose Jessica, Jackie, uh, I think it, it does this come down to client expectations then, you know, like your client's expectations are, are totally, totally different and how they, you know, they can go and get information if they want, not t- necessarily the right information, but you know, do they phone you? Do they get in touch with you and actually, what used to say, I'll get back to you in a couple of days. That couple of days is almost 46 hours too long. You know, they, they want that information there. And then are, are you feeling client demands are now sort of stopping you from, from looking at these advisory services or, 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 or improving? I, I think... I think accountants don't start the conversation. I don't think, and part of that's because they don't have time. And part of that's because they don't have their workflow sorted. So they, because if you sort your workflow out, then you've created more time for yourself to do the thinking because you're not going to think, what am I doing next? Because that kind of happens. So then you've got the time to dig deeper into the client and understand what they're wanting. And you can have the conversation. Once you've had the conversation, then you can reach out and find whisper claims or whatever, because you know what your client needs. Um, but I think the <clears> fundamental problem is that then often not having time to have that initial conversation with their clients. That's that's really interesting. That just we we had a, a dialogue with, with quite a big firm, sort of top fifty, top fifty firm. This is a couple of years ago, and a really enthusiastic tax partner talking to us about our solution, how wonderful it was going to be for their for their firm. Brought us in for a, a demo and a chat with his team got to the end of the demo and he said to the team right this is exactly what we want to do because this is going to free up time and space for you guys Um, once we've deployed it you can all get focused on bd and everyone in the room their heads went down that was clearly not what they wanted to do and was not in their skill set so you know you kind of you're exactly right technology frees up time but it's got to free up time for the for the things that people are equipped to do and and want to do and that's uh that's kind of interesting part of the direction of travel there. And and Jackie, um, you know, our, our fabulous members at the ICB and and you know very much pride themselves for knowing their clients inside out. You know, they, they a lot of your members, you know, they're they perhaps don't have many clients, but the clients that they do know, they see daily and then they talk to daily. Um they've got an important part to play, don't they? 
I think so. And again, this comes down to communications and the relationship that you have with your clients. I mean, I, I think <clears throat> if you look at, sorry, <clears throat> if you look at the two ends of the spectrum of clients, you've got the clients who don't want anything to do with their bookkeeping or the accounts till the end. Well, it's, that's the accountant's job. Now, that for me is absolving their responsibility as business individuals because they should need to know and want to know and be able to know exactly how they're doing on a day to day business. I think it's, is it the first three years, the number of business, new businesses that fell because they don't have a grasp of where they are financially and they don't have the cash? And, and that's a management thing. And yes, our members can do that, but the, the clients have to want to, to be in that situation and we can. We can lead them, we can push them, we can drag them screaming into the modern world. Um, I think as far as technology is concerned and the use of technology, the, the, the newer businesses are more keen on getting involved in this from day one because they're used to uh, dealing with technology every day of their lives. Now, I go back literally years ago when everything was still done manually. Um, I do remember the first software packages come in and you know, I worked with them and I even used to teach how to use some of them. Um, and they were very clunky in those days and they weren't as easy. And it was sort of the accountant or the bookkeeper who was doing the data entry. And then maybe once a quarter or once a year, we'd sort of send information across. And that changed years ago. And I think once everybody comes on board with that, I think life will get a lot easier and then you can do your workflows, but you have to bring your clients on with you. It's, it's Kevin on the, on the, I just think it is a kind of addendum to, to your point there is, is it probably came up, I'd imagine some of the sessions on the week is the theoretical anyway, volume of very small businesses who currently don't use the services of Jessica or, or somebody like Jessica, who, who will be, um, even if they do want to embrace this, they're a bit lost as to where to go with these things. Yeah. And hence the service offering from the accountancy profession or the bookkeeping profession, these will not be people who are able, willing, comfortable paying a lot of money for what it is that they'll be wanting to have done okay. as well. So there's this kind of check and file type thing and or, and, and again, that stuff, Jessica, you maybe agree, is it it's fully predicates good systems, good process, flow of data that you can rely on and to Mike's point, conf be confident in as well. Um, cause there is, I mean, you know, uh, many people are caught with this. I can't remember the numbers It's three point something million or, or even more, isn't it? That are potentially caught with this. They won't all currently have an engagement with a, an accounting professional of any shape or form. So that, that does really open up a whole other can of worms when it comes to the, um, requirement to have an understanding of your process to be able to scale and, and cope with those kind of things. If, if they're even economic for you to have as an, as an accounting professional, if you don't do that, they probably won't be. Uh, and you can end up lo losing money on everyone and make it up in volume, you know what I mean? Which is a frightening bit for a practice. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I, sorry, can I just very quickly come on that? I say, I agree, but but the check and file in itself has an issue because as professionals, under, you know, we're all registered under anti-money laundering, that we cannot just take those figures and, and, and click and file them. We have to make sure that they are accurate and everything is there. And I think there is a, it's a fine dividing line between, again, working with these people and agreeing how that system is going to work in place and how we're going to ensure that what we check and file is actually accurate I, and, and correct. And sorry, Jackie, I wasn't, I've been, um, I was probably just my usual yep. level of flippancy, but I mean, I think I understand that you, you, you have to have like the ML stuff and actually there are technology solutions for that these days that can really prevent on that as well. And when I say check about, I mean, in my head, um, there's an automated process where somebody's using a mobile app and they take pictures of all the receipts and it automatically extracts it and it pushes yeah. it through. And the checking is less than it would be if yes. you were in the Tesco carrier bag. Um, sorry, Jessica, you yeah. looked like you were going to say something. Yeah, that's that's what I was kind of going to say is that um, we really use free agent as like our part of our process. It's part of our workflow um, and we get the client to do it. You know, because, yeah, then they're doing a lot of that first bit. So we've then got the detail we need to do the, the checking or whatever else we're doing to, and to ask the questions. Because now suddenly we've got data we can actually ask questions about. Whereas previously, when it comes in a plastic bag, we've got to spend all our time just whacking it through Absolutely. to create just a tax return. We've got no, no time to, to look at it and say, why, why aren't you putting your mobile phone through there? Or why aren't you, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. And, and that's what if you, if you can make the client help with some of that process, and, and free agent is so easy to use that you don't need, the clients don't need to have any accounting knowledge. All they need to do is get their app, take a photo, you know, and with, with on open banking, we can do the reconciliation very quickly or they can, you know, it's, it's really, really, it's made it so much easier for clients mm. to help give us that data in a sort of a formatted way. We can then do something with it. 
Well, I'm going to I'm going to build on that, and I'm going to answer a couple of the questions that have came in and on the chat box. <clears throat> um, mm-hmm. You know, I, I, Andrew's asked a couple of questions uh, here and, and a couple of comments on, on the back of it, and I, and I think that's what you're alluding to there, Jessica. Uh, first of all, you know, uh, to this one, what, like, why are we as free agent not here selling the benefits of free agent? And and I think you've just kind of gave it there, Jessica. You know, we're not here promoting MTD and the scary things of MTD. I think we're just reacting to a demand that actually there's not an all, a lot of information about MTD there, and you know. Our, our attendance is kind of proving that. So we, we're filling that demand. But to your point, Jessica, you know, the ben- benefits of this offer is there is still a job to do. And, and Jackie, you said the same. There's still a job to do. You're still double checking. You still have to make sure things are correct. People will make mistakes at data entry, whether that be a, a spreadsheet or, or even, you know, paper. But at least you're getting this data quicker, cleaner than it's ever been before. So that double checking is, 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 is still necessary and you still need to do it. Yeah, but, what, it, but it's a lot less sort of mundane and, and a lot less um, sort of for uh, sort of demanding on, on on yourself. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What 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 do you want to do as an accountant? Do you want to be asking all the time, "What's this receipt for? What's that receipt for? What you know?" Or do you want to actually ask them, "What are you trying to achieve from this business?" You know, and how can I help you get there? Because I've got the time to to see where you are now and to help you know help give you some advice on how to get there. Um, and that wouldn't happen if you're spending all your time just doing the you know what's this for what's that for where's the receipt which frankly is just dull <laughs> uh, you must have said something right because you were getting four nods uh th- there as well kevin just i'm i'm, I'm coming to you on a, on a, on a personal level because because uh i know your experience no and, and, and jessica said a lot of things and, and you also mentioned open finance and, and that kind of thing and, and building on it sort of mike and, and r and d but where is this going because you know a lot of the comments here are saying well What's the proof that there, this is any more accurate, or what? what what's, you know, why is this? Is you know, wh- where are we going with all of this? You know, what 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 does the future look like? I'm so uh, glad you're here to answer this. <laughs> well, I think I think that the, the banking side of stuff from uh, what you know, open banking had similar challenges to the kind of lack of understanding, lack of communication, lack of trust. So people are very suspicious often who say, oh, so you, you, my, my bank account is going to be on the internet. What does that mean? So I, it's not quite that. It's about the fact that the, the business owner or the individual's data is available for them to be used in ways that benefit them. I think open finance, those of you who've heard the phrase of that, it kind of builds on that. So this goes beyond just the kind of bank transaction things into you know, potentially people are interested in kind of wealth management and those kind of bits and pieces. You have pensions, you have insurance, you have other kind of aspects of the information and data that, that, that relate to a person or a business. And sometimes, as we said, that's the same thing uh, in a lot of cases. So I think this builds out on that. But importantly, this shouldn't be the Wild West. This has got to be managed in a very kind of careful, curated way. On open banking side, obviously, the Financial Conduct Authority are involved in managing who's actually got access to this stuff. And it's very constrained and the barriers rightly are quite high to these kind of bits and pieces. But I think we're still kind of at the foothills of what you can do with this kind of information. Um, I think that, the, you know, we were, um, I remember in my days, Kev, you know, back in, in 2018, you know, Fraser got FCA accreditation. So we're a, an authorized information service provider in its own right. That was fun. Um, and all those kind of bits and pieces. And it's now you can see things like, you know, the confidence you've got in those kind of data means you can build other reports at the benchmark and stuff that you've done recently. And all those other bits and pieces that build on this confident data. But the killer apps, the, the mega solutions, the things that are really going to make people's lives different are still at the early stages of that. And I think that MTDs, the different versions of that, and Jackie said, you know, there, there's various different iterations of that and we've got other stuff coming down the, the, the track as well, are all building to this kind of future where, you know, you should be able to have a kind of bit more of a unified view of, of, of who you are and, 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 and what your kind of financial footprint and your financial position is in that. There's a lot of conversations about things like moving from a system of record into a kind of system of insight and system of meaning. So the point is that what's all this mean for me? Like to Jessica's point, it's like, fine, you've categorized all these transactions, right? That's fine. Where do you want to be in five years? Do you still want to be doing this? Do you want to be like retired? Do you want to be selling your business? Do you want to be, you know, acquiring another business? Do you want to be hiring staff? All those, they're very different conversations than the fundamental transactional data stuff that plays in that. So, I mean, as a, I wouldn't ever kid them down, I'm a technologist, but I've been involved in the software business for, for a long period of time. And I get excited still about, you know, what this could turn into that, you know, we're still really at the early stages of what we could do with all these different bits of understanding. What we will need though is, good sensible and safe methods to bring all this to, to, together 
that is not just going to be kind of random, you know, throw a six to start type stuff. It's going to have to be something quite careful and, and controlled. So it, there's a lot to follow and digitization is by no means, you know, uh, starting just right now rather than finished. I, I completely agree with that. You know, the, the sort of direction of travel is clearly that, you know, digitization and the adoption of technology is going to, it's just starting to evade. And of course, in the short term, we've got the problems that we've been talking about here in terms of, you know, there are sections of the market that are not adopting technology, but they, but they will, you know, eventually they will. And the, the sort of direction of travel with the tech itself is to move to much more sophisticated parts of the market. So, you know, as I mentioned, we're, we're, we're at the advisory end. So we've taken a consultative process and digitized that. So created an online process that enables a, something that's seen as being really complicated and people heavy. Uh, to become much less so, much easier be, for people to to offer a service and offer value to the clients. And I think that's that's going to be the direction of travel. You know, we're doing it in one area. The, there are a few people doing it in others. So you've got people like VFD Pro, for instance, who are doing a virtual finance director advisory sort of service. And I think you'll see more and more of that. And you'll probably see that the kind of bigger technology providers, you know, the big name people like Zero and so on, shifting into those areas over the next the next few years i can imagine that um happening and i think i think hmrc is doing everyone a favor to be honest yeah, i think I it, they're stopping them getting left behind they're you know they're saying that this is where it's going guys so we're going to force you there so that you don't get left behind otherwise you know we would end up with huge sections of of you know of, of the population or whatever left behind um until there's this mandation it means that you know, it doesn't force people to do it. So I, I really think it's a good thing. Yeah. There was Jessica, another... Jessica, what have you done to my chat box by saying that? What have you done? <laughs> There's another aspect of the, the, the um, pandemic and, and um, recently that uh, there's an organisation in Edinburgh called the Global Open Finance Centre of Excellence, which I know for agents a partner of. So um, it, it's about actually pulling together data from credible sources that includes banks, that includes platforms like Free Agent and some other accounting platforms. And this is a, a government funded um, educational focused uh, organization that tracks a lot of kind of like source data and acts as a kind of like central kind of um, coordination place to then take that data and then national data. I mean, and that is like, you know, what is the, the trends and what uh, spend patterns people have had from a personal banking point of view, from a business banking point of view, pre and post pandemic, and see what the actual financial and economic impact has been from the changes in society, the changes in, in business. And that is then fed back to government and other agencies like that to kind of play out, um, okay, have the interventions that we've taken as a government actually had the desired effect? What are the long-term you know, impact of these kind of bits and pieces? And that stuff would not have been possible to do whatsoever without firstly open banking, but secondly, platforms like Free Agent and digitized accounting platforms because there's just no access to data. It's it's still in the Tesco carrier bag or somewhere in a bank account somewhere possibly or in a petty cash tin in somebody's white van. So I think that you, you wouldn't have access to all that consolidated data. And this is the other kind of like um, second order impact of having, like Jessica said, people not left behind this. People that are, you know, it's anonymized, it's safe, it's, it's very secure as to that information, but it allows um, you know, people who, who are interested in actually looking at this at a kind of macro level to really make some, you know, interesting assessments as to whether what is going on is, is in the right way and whatever. So there's, there's all of those things that, that kind of play into that, which is dependent, again, on digitization and the mobility of data, you know, to kind of be moving around these kind of different kind of systems as well. And um, I, I'm, guys, there's, there's five minutes left. I'm, I'm very keen to, to try and open it up to, to, to our... Um now over 100 uh, attendees so we've smashed through one barrier at least um jackie to yourself you know and, and looking at the chats you know there is a lot of fear of uh, oh, the clients will just do it themselves or or you know what's our role in the future and you know i'll hold my hand up definitely when you know when i joined the industry a couple of years ago it was like <laughs> You know, get the bookkeeping, get the clients to do the bookkeeping themselves, and you know, almost now forgive me, it's not my thing, but almost pushing the bookkeeping element out the way. But actually, you know, as my relationship built over the years with the ICB, your membership's actually growing. You know, it's, yeah. you know, and this isn't the end of bookkeeping. This isn't the end of compliance. This is just not at all. This is just <laughs> turning it on its head and using it. Yeah, and, it's, and it's changing. 
yeah, it's changing the relationships and the way this information is there. Because if you think about it, the, the end result of this is to get all the information in into the system in a usable way so that us as agents, accountants, bookkeepers, the users, the actual taxpayers, HMRC itself, have access to a lot more information. I think that is the basics behind this. Um, and I think as bookkeepers, you see, a lot of businesses, however easy you make it, they might be able to take a photograph of their receipts and things and, and put that up, but they still perhaps have limited time. And with these systems that are in, pro, in, in place, us as our ICP bookkeepers can do that for you in a very cost-effective manner. Now, we will then work with accountants or a number of our members can go on and do the year-end submissions themselves, but we'll work, a lot of them don't want to, you to do the tax adjustments at the end of the year, so we'll work with accountants. Um, we do have an issue with HMRC at the moment on uh, having uh, only a single agency access to self-assessment, and that's something that um, everybody, when they see me come onto HMRC, cringe because they know I'm going to bring this forward. It is happening. Um, but the one thing that I would just like to get in that I've seen a couple of the chats come up is just to quickly go back, forgive me if I'm outstepping here, but to go back to the communication side. I think HMRC will start to get an awful lot of communications out over the next couple of months. Um, I think the reason is there's still legislation going through and that is, and if you think NTD is unwieldy, the legislation behind it is even more unwieldy. So the legislation is still going through and they can't put too much into place until the legislation has been agreed. There's been a lot of work done with the software companies on the program interfaces to allow this to work. And I know how much work that the, the software companies have done on this. And I think from what I've seen that you will start to get some communications coming out of HMRC over the next month or so. Well, thanks. Uh, Jessica, I'm going to ask you a very specific question came out about a scenario here. I'll just get your input. I know what my input is here, but you know, I, I suppose it's just this overarching thing. I think I think everyone kind of say that about processes and, and communication here. But you know, someone's saying here you've got a sole trader business who's a landlord on the side. How many bank accounts do they have? Isn't that just increasing the, the likelihood of uh, confusion and mistakes and things like that? You know, it ultimately, it yes, it is. But, but, Wait, but it makes it clearer. They get clarity then over what's happening with their property and what's happening with their right. sole trade. They're not the same thing. They're not all them. You know, they've got a property bit. They've got a sole trade. They might have investments and they should all be looking at those separately. To, to know how they're yeah. doing as a you know I think and that's I'll, no I'll... different to what they do now is it jessica because they they it's not all lumped together on the self-assessment tax no. return there's a separate section for property than there is for self-employment and trade and everything else so it's nothing more than they're doing now it's just it's having to be done on a more regular basis well, they're uh, just not aware of it either and it's we, we're, we're having to do it most of the time yeah. go, okay put 30 percent of that and 20 percent of that and it's completely random and you know and it would be so much better if we didn't have to do that and we had actual figures to do it properly and then yeah, everybody knew agree. exactly where they are and they know whether that property is worth having or not or whatever exactly i, I will go back to my commercial uh, lending days before before i joined free agent I never knew Freagent existed. And the day I walked into Freagent, I thought, my goodness, if I knew this existed and my clients used this, it would have made my lending decision so much better. And the knock-on impact of that is, you know, it takes banks longer to make credit decisions because you could have multiple income and multiple expenses going through a personal account. You could have, what is that your shopping? Is that your business shopping? That has an impact on the cost of lending and how risky it is. So actually the knock-on effects of, quicker, more affordable, better bespoke lending, you know, comes with this simplicity or clearness of, of the data that, that financial institutions are, are, are looking at. And then and the clients, knock on clients will actually thank me for forcing them to go to free agent. <laughs> Literally, we've had clients go, oh my God, it's completely transformed things. Yeah. It's because of the clarity and being able to see what's going on to know what their tax liabilities are, you know, so much more. And, and, and Mike, just, just almost to finish off in, in terms of, you know, the opportunities that this could give and the, and the amount of the freedom of, of accountants, you, you deal with accountants, what, what's their attitude when they go, my goodness, I used to, I used to send this away or, or I, yeah, I never knew that well, I could do a, this. It's yeah, that's a really good question. So one, one of the, the kind of big bits of feedback that we get around our particular offering is that it gives people an excuse to have deeper conversations with the clients. So building on some of the things that Jessica said, actually. So, you know, if you're going to, you're going to move away from just, you know, managing the books and want to get a deeper relationship with your client, again, it's this confidence about what am I going to talk to them about? And, and R&D is a subject where, 
you're going to really have to properly get under the bonnet of your of your client's business to be able to understand it. That gives an opportunity to create a closer relationship with that client and ultimately to, to deliver more value and, and potentially more services alongside um, what you're currently doing. So I think, you know, as you, as you kind of shift up the, 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 the kind of value um, chain, if you like, and start to offer these value added services, it kind of opens up a whole new world of, of uh, potential new revenue streams and deeper relationships. Excellent. Thanks, Mike. I've just launched a second poll there on anyone that would like a, a, an in-depth MTD consultation with one of, one of our guys. We talk about communication, we talk about pricing, we talk about the, the, the content that you can share with your clients. Not No uh, obligation to, to use free agent. It's, uh, it's to, uh, going back to sort of someone's point there. The, we feel a gap missing there from the, the information that the HMRC are providing and, and, and we're just looking to fill that gap. Um, I uh, This is almost like an, a, a nervous sort of tick that I have or a, a Tourette's tick that I have. I, I feel like I need to give Kevin the final word. Kev, Ke, Kevin, or, uh, have you got anything else to, to, to add? Or, 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 you know, I saw you sort of agree with, with a lot of what Jessica and Mike were saying. Is, is that... No, well, I think it's because they're right. I mean, I think that the, the, the point is that we reference back to this kind of workflow stuff. I think that plays across the whole piece, to be perfectly honest. I mean, this is the stuff that people have, have done and are doing will need to do. You know, Jackie's spoken about, you know, this being that, that our members can, can offer these kind of things that, uh, because they have good systems and good processes. But I think people, if they're nervous or anxious going into this, is A, take the offer of, you know, people that can, can walk you through this, you know, whether it's Fraser people or from somewhere else, you know, because this has been battle tested, you know, by people who have actually had success with these kind of systems and processes. And, you know, this is not a new problem with the education stuff. Um, I think, you know, people should listen and take that on board. So I think it's just think about your workflow, think about your processes and, and um, you know, listen to the, the experts and you should hopefully be able to come out of this unscathed. And uh, sorry, I'll, I'll just ask a follow up question. I think Kevin and try and highlight your many sort of hats that you, that you wear at the minute. The, the, this workflow and this process is, you know, ultimately all these systems that, whether it be free agent, accountancy manager, bright pay, whatever, they're all getting, banking, they're all getting closer together. The, the, you know, the, the connections between them are, have never been stronger, A, on a technical level, but also on a sort of, you know, yeah, uh, personal and, and, level. Do you know what I mean? The, 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 the inter-team connections are, are a lot stronger, aren't they? Yeah, and without doing the whole Graham Norton plug sort of thing, there is a, a practice management piece, I think, which is the spine of a lot of these things. Um, a lot of firms don't haven't looked at that, um, and, and I would recommend not necessarily, you know, do your research, find the one that works for you. But I think you would pay dividends to have something that actually takes the thinking out about what I'm doing next, as Jessica put it, and really having that stuff baked in that allows communication internally within your practice if you need these kind of bits and pieces. But I think the communication of those bits and pieces is not having to like you know, log into 16 different things or multiple windows open in your computer at any point in time is something we're all working very hard on. We've obviously got an integration with Fraid and you know, that's something we're looking to enhance over the forthcoming period of time. But then other processes and you know, things like R&D credit and making the data flow in these things is going to be beneficial in the long run. And yeah, absolutely. The tech stack, I'm sure Will spoke about this yesterday as well. You know, this stuff is not a tech stack because it's like randomly badly balanced stuff on top of each other. It should be Lego blocks that fit together rather than, you know, um, random stuff that, that is of a different shape. So um, that's the way that's going. And, and I'm, you know, um, even at my age, excited, Kevin, to see where that's that's going to go. Uh, young at heart, young at heart. Um, okay. Uh, we went sort of five minutes over. I think all that's left for me to, to do is thank everyone. I think, you know, picked up so much there, uh, you know, when I'm going to say this was all planned, lovely, jubbly, but I, I knew that we didn't need to do a lot of groundwork here because our, our guests were so fantastic. So, um, Kevin, thank you as always, and uh, really good to work with you once more. I'm pretty sure it won't be the last time this week, probably. Uh, Mike, uh, as well, I've known Mike for, for a couple of years uh, as well, we always work uh, closely together. Jessica, uh, Fajant partner, of course, um, um, part of our, our, our panel, you try to get you in front of many product managers as we possibly can because you know the way, uh, as well. And then, uh, Jackie, um, uh, as always, you know, Free Agent has come to the, the ICB tour, we're, we're doing our bookkeeper week uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Um, guys, Account X is obviously next week as well, or, or following week, I'm, I'm pretty sure we'll. We'll see everyone there uh, as well at some point. But yeah, all that's left for me to do is, is thank you all. There is no nice way of ending these webinars, sadly. So as soon as I say end, we don't go to the Graham Norton reference. We don't go into the green room and have a, a, a lovely glass of wine. But um, 
Well, I've got a free agent room. It is painted green. I'm going to be in shot. But um, yeah, so so thank you, everyone. Um, that brings MTD Week to an absolute conclusion, and it's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, I, I know we are chuffed internally with it, and obviously all this built up to the launch of our landlord product yesterday. So if you need uh, any information on that, you'll be redirected to our portal straight after this uh, webinar. Uh, again, thanks to our guests, and, and I really appreciate it. I'm sure it's not the last time there. I shared all the guys' LinkedIn's as they were talking. Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't mind you connecting with them. Uh, I strongly advise that you do, because that's where you, you get a found, an absolute foundation of, of, of information from everyone. That's not even a term, but anyway. Thanks very much, and uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon and weekend.